I'm Asha Nowitzki. I'm a South East London born and now Brighton based artist and mama of three. As an ADHD woman, hyperfocus and synesthesia are traits which I feel enable a deeper level of immersion in the sensory awareness of the making process. With both my parents being creatives, jewellers, makers, designers, one with a preference for realism and the other leaning towards abstraction, this creative upbringing, alongside a bloodline of neurodivergence and all the sensory sensitivities and attention to detail that come with, enabled a certain level of creative understanding and resonance for the visual, tangible and audio. With Polish parentage, the notion of fulfilling classic gender roles was a prerequisite. This, alongside my South East London upbringing, created a contradiction and duality with a sense of confusion with regards to my role as a woman. This has created an ongoing feminist narrative in the work that I produce, sometimes presenting the divine, sometimes presenting the dark, but always with a level of playfulness, which stems from that sense of confusion and having humour as a coping mechanism for this. This interest in gender psychology is explored through sculpturally performative codependent enmeshment between art and artist. Trauma embracement, boldness and reigning feminine ferocity is presented through a neurodiverse lens in which sculptural objects emerge as entities and develop through wordplay and performative documentation. I'm completely fascinated by the work of Russian artist Tanya Gomelskaya, whose work is emotionally charged presenting personal experiences through the form of visceral oil paintings with three-dimensional elements. Perhaps what draws me so much to her work is the Eastern European connection, as well as the sculptural presentation of the dark feminine awareness of woman and self. I'm also in awe of the work of New York-based glass artist Deborah Churesco, whose work also showcases personal experiences. She playfully presents discussions on gender politics, social ideas and feminism, all of which speak to me. Glass is an area I would love to extend my sculptural practice into and intend to push it in this direction in the near future. Having used a lot of clear materials, in particular resin and liquid latex, I feel it makes sense. I'm also looking into ways in which I can access glass blowing workshops and research the practicalities of sustaining this type of making. Right now, I feel a period of transition occurring where the limitations of using my home as a studio and having to work within restricted time frames as a solo parent need reassessing, and I'm looking into how to best maximise my time. I'm hoping to have a studio built in my garden, which would mean not having to double up living space and creating space and not confusing the two energies. Also, on a practical level, this means it's a making process in which work needs to be left to stand, dry, harden, etc. makes it difficult as it needs to be moved in order for the space to be made functional again. As well as little wandering hands being about wanting to touch and poke at everything. I find my biggest challenge of being an artist is to manage my time as a parent and maker. Not having the time capacity to make work immediately when a burst of inspiration takes over and instead having to work within the rigid time frames I mentioned earlier can feel extremely limiting. This in, this in turn creates a cycle of guilt as a parent as I feel guilty that I resent having to work around certain time frames based around my children. Advice I would give to my younger self would be to remind myself that art is subjective and to break through the anxieties of showing work without being afraid that not everyone will like it. I would also tell my younger self that the fruition of what I make evolves and as these transitional stages emerge, it's okay to go through experimental periods of uncertainty. I would tell myself to be patient when creative blocks feel impenetrable and allow for the flow to return organically. Experimentation is a big part of my making process, with a sensory sensitivity and a need to experience with texture, I have an instinctual need to create work that is tangible. This often involves a mix up of traditional art and DIY materials with unconventional materials such as keyboard keys, condoms, curtain hooks. These mix ups don't always work out, but are always a lesson and enable a progression. 
The audio aspect when it comes to making varies depending on how busy my mind is that particular day. There are times when my mind is in full hyper mode and needs stimulation and dopamine from all angles. So I might have a screen on with flashing visuals, which are muted, as well as listening to loud music while I'm making. Other times I'm fighting through a fog where I'm struggling to focus and sensitive to any little sound, at which point I'll make work which is low key for short periods of time in complete silence. I've experienced a variety of responses to my work over the years. One of the best reactions was when I was wheeling my octopus muse Ophelia in a trolley through Brockwell Park and was stopped by a lady having a run who asked if it was a real octopus. Turned out this lady was also an artist and became someone I've shared creative journeys with and is now one of my closest friends. I hope that people can feel some sort of connection with my artwork, whether it be a feminist resonance, a neurodiverse familiarity, or maybe just find it funny, regardless of whether it is aesthetically pleasing to them or whether they consider the work to be skillfully made or not. I just want to keep making, have the space, freedom to express and keep on translating the world through a certain